Today we're traveling to France from our kitchen and making the perfect classic French dish, beef bourguignon. But we're gonna be making it in the Instant Pot, so keep on watching and I'll show you how to go through it right now. Hey everyone, welcome to The Foreign Fork. My name is Alexandria and this is The Foreign Fork Kitchen where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. And it seems like the French recipes are pretty popular, so I'm gonna show you another one of my favorites, beef bourguignon, but we're gonna be making it in the Instant Pot, so it's gonna be a lot quicker than any beef bourguignon recipe you've tried on the stove top. To get started, I have six pieces of bacon that I've cut up into pretty fine pieces, and my Instant Pot is turned to the saute function, and I'm going to Put the bacon in here and cook it up until it's nice and crispy. You don't need to put any oil or anything in the pot. The bacon will release its grease, so that's all that you need to keep the pan nice and uh, greased up. As you're cooking the bacon bits, some of the grease might start sticking to the bottom of the pan. You can just use like a wooden spoon with a flat edge to scrape that up so that it doesn't start to burn on the bottom. We want this bacon to be nice and crispy because it's eventually gonna be cooked in the beef broth, kind of like a stew. I have just a normal bowl here. I put two pieces of paper towel in here so that all the excess grease can get drained off. And I'm just gonna use a slotted spoon and remove all of my bacon bits into this bowl, set it aside. So the reason why we're using a slotted spoon is because we wanna leave as much of the bacon grease in the pot as possible because we're gonna be cooking some veggies next. So we want that yummy bacon flavor to be sticking around so that we can cook the veggies in the bacon grease. Now that we've removed the bacon, the next thing that we're gonna do is add in our veggies. So I have one sweet onion that I've sliced up. I'm gonna put that into the pot. And I also have one cup of sliced carrots. Now I had a bag of baby carrots in my fridge, so I just sliced up the baby carrots. So they're small pieces, but if you want, you could also use a full big carrot that you slice up into one cup worth of slices. Now we've kept the pot on the saute function and we've kept the bacon grease in there. And we're just gonna saute these vegetables for a few minutes until they start to soften. So you may be wondering, why is this dish called beef bourguignon? Well, it originated from a region of France called Burgundy, or in France, pardon my pronunciation, Bourgogne, maybe? That region of France is famous for both its wine and its beef, so putting both of those ingredients into one dish that forms the region's signature dish is a natural combination. You may find that the beginning steps of cooking this dish are no less time intensive than it takes to actually cook it on the stove, but the real benefit of the Instant Pot comes in when instead of a two to two and a half hour cook time, we only have about a 40 minute cook time in the Instant Pot. So hold on out, you'll see the benefits of the Instant Pot soon. Once your veggies are sauteed and your onions are soft, you can remove them from the pot. So I just have like a little bowl off to the side. And again, just like the bacon, I'm gonna remove this into this bowl and set it aside. The last prep step that we need to do is brown our beef. So I have about three tablespoons of olive oil here. I'm gonna put about one tablespoon or so into the pot. It's still on the saute function. And then I have three pounds of stew beef. I'm gonna put about one third of it at first into the pot here, all in one single layer so that the outside of the beef can brown a little bit. I have an eight quart pot, so I can fit about one third of the beef in the pot at a time, one third to one half, but a typical size for a pot is a six quart, so if you have a smaller pot and you need to do more rounds of browning the beef, you can definitely do that too. We're searing the beef because we really wanna get like a nice defined brown crust on the outside of the beef so that when we put it into the stew and it starts to cook, it holds in all of the juice and the flavor into the cuts of meat. This dish became popular in France in the Middle Ages because it was a way to use up some of the tougher cuts of meat that would normally go to waste, So, and it fed a lot of people. But one of the downfalls of this dish has obviously been how long it takes to prepare, partially because when you use the tougher cuts of meat, they really need to cook for a long time in order to tenderize them, so that's where the Instant Pot comes in. When the first round of beef is done cooking, I'm just gonna use my tongs, remove it to a plate off to the side, clear some room up in my pot, and then I'll cook the second and then the third round of beef in the same manner. And again, keep in mind, we're not cooking the beef all the way through, we're just cooking the outsides. It can be pink in the middle and that's totally fine. The first written recipe for beef bourguignon was written by a French chef and it was created with just one big cut of beef, but eventually one most famous Julia Child came about and really revolutionized beef bourguignon because instead of using a big chunk of meat, she used stew beef or beef that was cut up into pieces because she thought that it made it seem more approachable for home cooks. And it became a really popular recipe. 
and even was the plot focal point of the Julie and Julia movie that came out in 2009. So now that we have finally prepped all of the ingredients that are going into the stew, it's time to actually put the stew together. So I have some beef broth here that I'm just going to pour into the pot, just a little splash at first. And then I'm gonna use a um, wooden spoon with a flat edge like this and scrape up any browned bits that are on the bottom of the pot from any of the <laughs> things that we just cooked. And this is really important because if you don't scrape up the brown bits, you could get a burn notice, which is no fun when you're cooking with an Instant Pot. Just make sure to get any of that crusted stuff off the bottom and you can just leave it right in the pot like this. After you've scraped up the brown bits, you can put the remainder of your two and a half cups of beef broth into the pot. And then in there, we're pretty much also gonna throw almost everything else that's in the recipe. So our um, set aside carrots and onions, we can put back in here. I also have eight ounces of white mushrooms that have been sliced, three quarter cups of red wine, one quarter cup of tomato paste, and two teaspoons of chopped garlic. I'm gonna just use my spoon to kind of mix that all up together. Then I'm also going to add my reserved bacon bits. We'll put the beef cubes back in to the pot. And I'm just going to dump it so we can get all that yummy juice that's in there. We'll dump it right back into the pot. And then on top of that, we're going to put our herbs. So I have three sprigs of rosemary, three sprigs of thyme, three sage leaves, and one bay leaf. We're going to put all of that on top of the beef so it doesn't get lost in the stew when we want to eat it. We're gonna put the lid on, and then we're gonna cook it on high for 40 minutes. We're gonna allow it to do a natural release for 10 minutes, which means that we're not gonna touch the pressure valve or anything. We're just gonna let it sit for 10 minutes, and then after that 10 minutes is up, we're gonna manually release the rest of the pressure that's in the pot. Once you've manually released all of the pressure that's inside the pot, then it's time to thicken the sauce. So again, I turned my pot to the saute function. If you've seen any of my other meat dishes in the pressure cooker, we're gonna thicken it up with some flour and water. So I have six tablespoons of flour in here and then about, I don't know, eight tablespoons or so of water, which is about a half cup. And we're going to use a fork to combine everything together, mix it up and form a paste. Make sure that all of the clumps are mixed right out of the flour. And and then as soon as everything is dissolved, we're gonna add this into our pot of boiling sauce. And then we're just gonna mix it together and wait a couple minutes and it should thicken. Now it doesn't have to be like a glaze or anything like that. It doesn't have to be super thick. It still is a stew. You can let it sit and simmer for a couple minutes and if it's not as thick as you want it, then um, you can add a little bit more, maybe like two tablespoons of flour to another three tablespoons of water. Mix it up and add it in again. Once the sauce is thickened to your preference, then you get to serve your beef bourguignon. You can serve it with either mashed potatoes, which is what I have here, here, recommended for me because I just love mashed potatoes. Uh, but you can also serve it with noodles or croutons or by itself in a bowl. But again, mashed potatoes are definitely my recommended option. If you wanted a quintessential French dish and the perfect way to taste France from your kitchen, this is a great way to do it. Beef bourguignon in the Instant Pot. I love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for checking out my channel. And don't forget to check out all of the other videos that I have on my channel here with Instant Pot and non-Instant Pot dishes from all around the world. If you want written instructions for the recipe, you can find the link to the recipe in the description of this video. And don't forget to put some culture in your kitchen this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.